Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, Adobe updated Photoshop to version 22. Over the next few videos, I'll be going over some of the significant new features of this latest version of Photoshop. Today, we're going to talk about this new sky replacement feature. Now, if you've ever in the past replaced a sky in Photoshop, you know that it's a multi-step process. Well, this new feature allows you to do it basically with a couple clicks. If you're familiar with Luminar 4 and how it goes about replacing a sky, Photoshop is almost identical to that. Now, I chose this image not because it's a great image, because it's a difficult image to replace a sky in because we have the tree branches going up into the sky and we have to make sure that the replacement sky gets in between all the different leaves and branches. So. To replace a sky in this, just load the image into Photoshop, then go up to Edit, and then down to Sky Replacement. And when you do that, the Sky Replacement dialog box will pop out, and it will automatically put the last sky you used into the image. Now, if you want to use a different sky, just click on this little drop down here, and you can see that you have three folders of skies. These skies come with Photoshop. We have a number of blue skies, we could click some different blue skies and it will automatically resize the sky so that it fits in the image. And you can see how it puts this sky perfectly over the old sky. So it's showing up between the branches and everything there. So we have blue skies. Then we have some spectacular skies. Like we could go something like that. Something like that. Then Below that, we have some sunsets. So we could do some sunsets as well. Now, the sunsets don't necessarily fit this image. Of course, you want to try to fit the lighting of your replacement sky to your original image uh, best you can. So it looks natural. Now, just for the sake of demonstration, let's just go back to this, uh, this sky because I want to dem demonstrate some of the other adjustments you can do. So once you decide on the sky, you could then just click and close down that little uh, like folder there. And then you have a number of different functions. First of all, you could shift the edge. This is basically the transition area right in this case where that horizon is. And if you move it to the right, you could see it kind of shifts everything down. So now the clouds are over the lake. And if I move it to left, it will shift everything up. Now, one thing I've noticed with this sky replacement dialog box um, you can't just reset a slider back to its default position. Those of you that use Photoshop know that often, if you just want to reset a slider back to where it was, you could double click right on the slider, or in some cases, double click on the name, and it doesn't do that. So you have to kind of remember where it was if you want to get it back to where it originally was. So uh, we could fade the edge. This again is that uh, transition area. You're basically just going to fade the original sky in a little bit um, over that. And then we have these uh, sky adjustments. You could adjust the brightness so you can make the sky brighter, which probably fits this image a little bit better. You could warm the sky up a little bit or cool it down. If you move it to the right, you'll warm it up. And if you move it to the left, you'll cool it down. In this case, I want it just a little bit warmer. It still doesn't really look natural. I picked a, a poor sky for replacement, but it's good enough for demonstration. Now, scale, um, this is basically you're going to zoom in the sky or zoom out the sky. Uh, this is important because usually you want the focal length that the sky was shot at, shot at to match the focal length the image was shot at. So if you shot an image, let's say at 85 millimeters, but the sky was shot at 14 millimeters, it doesn't always look right. So in that case, you could zoom in the sky, move it to the right, or you could zoom out the sky. And if you go too far, um, if the sky image was considerably smaller than the original image, you'll get something like that. You don't want that, right? So we'll bring it back to, I think it was around 100. So that's good. So you get that. You also could flip it to better match the lighting in the scene. So you're just flipping it horizontally. Then you have a little expose triangle here. And if you click on that and roll it open, you'll see that there's a number of adjustments for the foreground. Uh, first of all, the lighting mode. Where the original image overlaps with the sky, this is what lighting mode affects. So in this case, 
It's the tree branches that are up into the sky area. Right now it's in multiply mode, which means those tree branches are going to be a little darker than the original image. If I go and use screen mode, they're a little lighter. Now it doesn't look right for this image, but when I was experimenting with this yesterday, I found that for some images with some skies, screen mode does look better. So definitely roll this expose triangle open and come down here and try the other lighting mode. You may find that it works better. By default, it's going to be at multiply. Um, I'm not sure if it remembers your last choice, but by default, when you first open it, it's going to be multiply. Now lighting adjustment. Now this again is more where the tree is overlapping the sky. So if I move it to the right, I will make that tree a little darker. You see, it's just where it's overlapping the sky though. And if I move it to left, I make that tree lighter. And I think it looks better for this image when it's a little lighter. Now color adjustment is more of a subtle adjustment and it affects the original image pretty much everywhere. So it'll do the foreground area as well. And if I move it to the right, I couldn't even really see anything happen. If I move it to left, I didn't really see anything happen. But it is more of a subtle adjustment and, and um, just kind of shifts the colors just a little bit to try to better match the sky. Now, when you finally have decided on the sky, you could output it two different ways. You could output it to what's called new layers. And what it will do is it will give you a folder with all the elements for the sky replacement in that folder. Or you could just do a duplicate layer and that would be smaller if you're going to save it. Now I'll do both. I'll do this for this image. I'll do new layers. So you see what it looks like. And when you're satisfied, you click OK. And when you do that, you see we have a folder at the top. And when we open that, we have all these different layers that constitute the sky replacement. So that's it. Now I showed you that uh, Photoshop has a number of different skies that come with it. But what if you want to use your own sky? Well, you could do that as well. Now I have this image here and I'm going to replace the sky into it, in it. So I'm going to go to edit down to sky replacement. And again, it's going to use the last sky I used, which doesn't look good on this, but I want to use my own sky. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this little uh, drop down basically. And then you'll see there's a little gear here there. If you click on that, you'll get a flyout menu. And what you want to do then is just click on new sky. All right. And then a finder window will open up if you have a Mac. A file explorer window will open up if you have a PC. Navigate to where the sky is on your computer. I have it right here. And then click open. And it will apply your sky to the image. Well, you could name it. I forgot about that. So we'll name it. We'll just keep the original name and click OK. So it replaced uh, the original sky with my own sky. And I like the lighting on this because it's uh, from the far left. And you can see how the lighthouse is getting lit from the far left. So we have that sky here and it's in there forever now. And we could put it in its own folder. All you need to do is click on this little uh, folder right here and we'll give it a name. I'll just call it my skies. And we'll click OK. Now we have a folder. Now we just need to drag that sky into that folder. So it's there. So it's in my skies. Now I should add that I use the little flyout menu to add a new sky. You could also just click this little plus sign right here. And when you do that, you could jump in and, and add a new sky right there. You also could delete a sky with the garbage can. Just click on the sky and click the little garbage can. And I showed you how to, um, to put skies or create a folder that you could put your skies into. Also, uh, when you're like got these things open and you're looking at all the skies, you could change the size of the preview of the sky with that slider right there. Uh, so you could get a better look at them if you need to. Now, uh, when you're done with that, you could close that down and then you have the same exact adjustment. So you could shift the edge. You could um, fade the edge. You could make it brighter or darker as you see fit. Make it a little brighter and warm it up a little bit. And you could adjust the scale again with this if you need to. And same thing, you could flip it. So everything, all those controls are there. I won't go through them all again. Let's see what lighting mode screen looks like on this image. Not nowhere near as good. We'll go back to multiply. 
So I got, see when I affected scale, you see these little edges? I didn't make it big enough uh, there. So we gotta bring it out just a little more. So just be careful when you, when you move the, sky, the scale slider that you actually have it so it's covering the entire image. Um, with that, and let's see if lighting adjustment does. Yeah, you could see how color adjustment is affecting the water a little bit more than it uh, affected the foreground of the other image. Now, again, I'll mention you could, uh, I'll put it two different ways, to layers or to a duplicate layer. We'll do a duplicate layer, and we'll click OK. And you can see now it's just a duplicate layer, so you don't have all those different layers in a folder. And you could just turn it off and on. So there is the new sky replacement feature that is in the latest version of Photoshop, version 22. Um, I mentioned at the top that over the next few videos, my next few Photoshop videos, I'll go over some of the new features of Photoshop. And there's, uh, in the next video, there's a really interesting new feature under filter. It's called neural filters. And I'll be doing that in the next video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>